Buenos, pero muy buenos días. Amen. He is risen. Let's do it again. He is risen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Welcome to Grace Bible Church Midtown. My name is OJ Limus, and I'm the campus ministry coordinator for our campus. And I'm so blessed to have you here, so blessed to share the word this morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible, incredible to have you, uh, and we cannot be more excited just to spend this morning together and enjoy the fact that we are coming to celebrate that Jesus is alive. Amen? Okay, so listen, I'm Guatemalan, and... I, I don't mind when people talk back to me, okay? Actually, back in Guatemala and Latin American countries, maybe it's here too. I didn't do that part of the research, okay? We actually have something in our churches. So before that, how many students are here? High school schoolers, uh, college students, post-grad students, post-grad, grad, grad students. You know how many? Raise your hand, raise your hand, okay? How many of you... And this might be a yai or nai, right? How many of you love open book exams? If you read, those are fantastic, right? I see a hand there like, yeah, you know, okay? So this morning, we're actually going to have an open slide, I guess, uh, exam, okay? But before that, I want you to take this home, okay? Christ died our dead so that we can live his life. Can you tell to the person next to you, Christ died our dead so we can live his life. If you, if you are a little brave learning, you know, Spanish, one more time and do it in Spanish, see? Cristo murió nuestra muerte para que vivamos su vida. Okay, who's ready for the test? So, I, I told you, I don't mind if you speak back, okay? Uh, and let's do it, okay? So, back in Guatemala when I was growing, and this is a very Latino, okay? And, and I, I hope to see it here more. This is, this is very easy. When I ask, who lives, okay? You're gonna answer, Jesus Christ, okay? And if you know in Spanish, it's, ¿Quién vive? Okay, there we go, we're, we're practicing, okay? Do with me, la, 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 okay? When I ask, okay, and to his name, you're going to say glory, okay? Very simple, very simple. And then I'm going to ask, ask a third question, and his people, and we are his people, right? And we're going to say in victory. Are you ready to practice? This is going to be a warm-up uh, uh, round, okay? So do this, stretch with me. This is more for me because I'm, I'm excited. Okay, let's do it. Who lives? Okay, and to his name. Okay, and his people. Okay, 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 I like it, I like it. We'll see, we'll see, you know, in Spanish, who had, stand please, let me know who has more uh, decibeles, you know, and then we do it. Let's do it one, one last time, okay? Quien vive? Who lives? Amen, amen. So let's actually start with that question, okay? Who lives? Amen. Eso, I like it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, we're getting there. I love it. Okay. So let's actually go to John chapter 20, verses 1 and 4. Okay. It's so early on Sunday morning. We're here early this morning. See? And so it was still dark. Mary Magdalene, she came to the tomb and find that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. I, this is a very interesting part. We're not going to go there, okay? She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. We're going to go to verse 6, and then it says, then Simon Peter arrived and went inside, and he also noticed the linen wrapping lying there, while the clothes that had covered Jesus' head was folded and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. 
For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that say Jesus must ri rise from the dead. Then they went home. So we're going to focus on this verse, okay? Mary was standing outside of the tomb, and she wept. She stopped and looked, and she saw two white robed angels, one seated at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. They asked, dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she did not recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where they have put him. I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which in Hebrew means teacher. So this is, this is Easter morning. This is Sunday morning. And basically the disciples and all the people that love Jesus and were very close, they have very difficult days. They were... Uh, mourning, they were, they were crying out, the disciples were even, you know, going back to their former things, for the former things that you used to do, uh, and, 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 there was, and there was just a lot of grief. So, I want us to focus in three questions today that are just important for us to understand how this will impact our life. So if, go, if, we, if we keep ourselves, you know, in these in this verses, we're going to see in verse 15 that the first question that Jesus asked is, why are you weeping? Now, this question was asked before by the angels. But listen, church, this is very important because in this moment, Mary was in, in this state where she has lost all her hope. Her hope was gone. She was crying because Jesus was gone. She saw Jesus performing miracles, talking about uh, he was the Messiah. He was the one who was going to come. And then he was gone. They saw him crucified. They were hopeless. Mary was hopeless. The one that was the Messiah, the one who was her savior, the one that delivered her from demons, according to Luke chapter 8, verse 2. He was in the tomb for him. And now even worse, she did not know where the body was. When we see this, think for a second on how Mary was feeling. She was hopeless, broken. And how the worst thing had happened, somebody took the body, according to her, her friend, her master. So, Mary discovered the tomb. Now, this is very important for us because this is the foundational of the truth of our faith that Jesus is no longer among the dead, but he is Alive. This, we can find that in Psalm 1610, where David prophesies, and he says, For you will not abandon, abandon my soul to the seal, or, seol, or let your body of the, one, of the Holy One see corruption. And Hosea 13, 14 said, I will ransom them for the, from the power of the great, and I will redeem them from the dead. Now, Mary was not able to see that because she was not focused. She was on a, on a place where she was just grieving. But church, she was about to discover in these verses 
that the resurrection of Jesus Christ was going to be the declaration of his victory over death. And so, to his name, come on, to his name, okay, ahí vamos, ahí vamos, see? The second question is, who are you looking for? Now, Jesus sees Mary in tears. And then he's asking, why are you weeping? He's not waiting for her response. He knows why she's weeping. He, he is, he's Jesus, amen? But, but he asked, whom are you seeking? Now, Mary pauses from her tears, you know, for a second. And it's like, who are you looking for? Now, ask yourself that question. She's looking for Jesus, right? I mean, it was pretty obvious. But he is right there, and she is not able to see him. Maybe in this morning, you've been wondering, you've been coming to church for a long time. But there's areas in your life that you're not able to see Jesus. Now let me share a little bit of my personal testimony. I grew up in church. I was born and raised in church, okay? In Spanish, we say cristiano de pura cepa. I was, I was Christian, you know. My parents were Christian. I was a second generation Christian, you know. But I attended church for a long time. Bible school, youth retreat. And I can tell you that for the longest time, I thought that I was Christian. Because I was attending to church with my parents. It was not until uh, Passion Week back in Guatemala. I was 21 years old. After being away from the Lord for a season and thinking that I was doing right. Before that time, I was away from the Lord. I was sinning very intentionally. You know? And I remember... The one day I woke up and I said, if I continue living this way, I'm going to die. If I continue going this hard in my life, doing crazy things, I'm not going to make it till I'm 40. I'm about to be 40. And I still remember the day when I, at 21 years old, gave my life to Christ. I attend church my whole life. I was sitting with my parents my whole life. I was sitting with pastors and, and some people that were, knew the world, but I, Jesus had not fully revealed in my life. I still remember the song they were singing. It was, it's a very vivid moment for me. Now, Mary... She walked with the Lord. She was delivered from, him, from, from, from demons, you know, because of him. He, 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 he performed miracles. But there were areas in her life where she was not able to see Jesus. In fact, Mary did not recognize Jesus. Have you, have you seen a video of a celebrity doing something or performing like street, you know, uh, art or, or I, I saw a video of, I'm not going to say the name, one of my favorite football players, right? And so he was dressed with beard and everything and he was like performing soccer tricks, you know, football tricks, sorry. Oh, that's just, uh, I was, I, I perf he was performing, you know, all this street and then people see him and trying to just to go around him, they didn't recognize him. Once he took off, you know, the custom. People were like, wow, the best player in the world. Very similar to this. Mary was so focused on her grief, on her pain, that she was not able to see that the one standing next to her was Jesus. She even confused him with the gardener. And you might, you might think, oh, Mary, 
That will happen to you, not to me. Let me tell you, church, there will be moments in our life where we need to recognize Christ over those areas. Maybe over your whole life this morning. Jesus, in this passage, wants to refocus Mary's heart and mind. Mary, are you looking for Jesus? Are you looking for hope? <laughs> it's like hope is here. The third question that he asked, have you believed? So here's what happened next. Mary goes to, the, to tell the disciples that she's seen Jesus. Yeah? But Mark and Luke both say that they didn't believe her. So he actually appears to the disciples. And so he did to Mary Magdalene, then to the disciples without Thomas, then to the disciples with Thomas. And on each of these stages, there was a certain type of unbelief. Remember, they saw Jesus being crucified a few days before. They saw Jesus' body being prepared and be put in the grave. So in their human nature, it was still pretty, pretty hard to believe. So Mary goes, tells them they don't believe her. And so Jesus appeared to them. And in this part, on the same day of resurrection, Jesus appears to the disciples who were gathering a house with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish. They lost everything. They lost hope. Now they live in fear. Jesus comes in, stands among them, and says, peace be with you. Then he shows them his hands and his side, and the disciples are overjoyed. In Spanish, we will say, ahora sí, ¿verdad? Now that, now that he's, he's showing there, oh, yeah, let's have joy. I mean, but we are a little bit like that too, so no judging, right? And so they overjoy when they see the Lord, and Thomas was not there. Then we know that Thomas, he was in disbelief or unbelief, and he was saying, I will not believe until I see it. Eight days later, Jesus appears again to the disciples, and he specifically addresses Thomas, inviting him to touch his hands and his side so that he will not be unbelieving but believing. And then Thomas responds with a confession of faith, my Lord and my God. Now, why do I ask you to think on these questions? Why are you weeping? What are you looking for? Are you believing? Have you believed? It's important for us to know that the Bible is true. Amen? Because the Bible said that Jesus resurrected from the dead. He did indeed. But many of us in this place, we might have a picture of Jesus because culturally we've been part of church or our family has come to Easter Sunday, but there's a part of us that actually needs to allow Jesus to come in. It might be to give him your life completely, or it might be because there's areas of your life where you need to believe. And so Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And this promise is for all of us in this room and for our families and for our friends and for those who are not here this morning. Church, it's important that the message of the gospel is not only heard during this Sunday. We're grateful that you're here. We're grateful that you are with your families here. But 
Jesus is coming back soon. Amen? Because the Bible says so. And so, we need to move forward. We need to be active. We need to know that what we see on the slides, we're being very intentional. We're not just filling, you know, a program and say, okay, what do we do this time? Oh, there's Ramadan, so let's throw it there. And if people do it, fantastic. No, no, no. Let's pray for those who are lost. Let's pray for those who are around us and don't have Jesus. Let's pray for our family member who is actually turning away from the Lord and might tell you, I don't want anything with your God, but it's our call to pray for them and show them the light of life in every action that we do. It might be difficult to believe because we are surrounded. If you see the disciples and Mary and, and many others, they were surrounded. What they were going through, it was it was just terrible a scenario, difficult to believe that Jesus was alive. And that might be happening on our time, on this time. Maybe you're seeing that the government is declaring things in days that are, are for the Lord. And you might be like, this is difficult. Maybe you're seeing that a family member is going against the Lord. You might be, this is even more difficult. Sickness might be coming. And you might be like, it's too impossible. Can we took our eyes from what we are, we might believe that it's the gardener. You know what? We might believe that there's someone else. But if we look up and we place our faith and we focus, we will see that Jesus is with us. He is with us. And bless are those who believe without seeing me. So this is something for us. Something for us to take. This part of John. This part of John. I love that has this promise for us. As we are wrapping our series of come and see, we, we will start listening more about the gray I am, the I am statements. But the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are breathing so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing in Him, you will have life by the power of His name. So knowing that Jesus is alive, church, because He lives, we can live too. Because He, as we remember in the very beginning, what we were reading, because He dies our dead, he took the death that we deserve. He carried the sins that were condemning us to death. Now we can live his life. Now we can be in victory. Now, whenever there's persecution in us, we can, like Andrew in, in Acts, when he was about to be beaten to death, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Jesus sitting next to to the Father. There's hope for us. There's hope for our families. There's hope for a future. Culturally, things might be getting more and more difficult. Guess what? Jesus continues to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we can be in victory because of him. So, Oh, by the way, it was a Stefan, <laughs> not Andrew, sorry. <laughs> I'm too excited. So, let me ask you one more thing. How is his people and his people? Oh, come on. Like, like if Texas A&M is winning UT next, next summer, okay, next uh, fall, okay? And his people. There we go, yes. Brazil, Mexico, 1-1, and then 
I'm not gonna say who's gonna win, we celebrate, yes, same, same energy, okay? I wanna, I wanna ask you to take this to your heart. And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. But he is risen. So that means that our preaching, our faith, our lives are meaningful. Maybe you are wondering, maybe you're feeling that you're losing purpose because you have this difficult exams coming that might define the course of your career. Maybe you are stressed because you're trying to get a, a, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, because you're, gonna, you're thinking on your future. Maybe you're longing to have a kid, and that has been your prayer for the longest time. Maybe you are concerned about the, the difficult situations financially. I don't know what is concerning you. What I can tell you is that over everything, Jesus is victorious. And we can be in victory because he is risen. So I want to ask you, church, just remember this. Remember that Christ died our death so that we can live his life. I know if you're here, it's because there's something that has been calling you. And you might be even here for the longest time. You might even be here since before. And I'm talking here is in the church family. You might be here even before. But there's still areas in your life where this needs to be a reality. Before we go into this video, something else that happens to us is I served over a decade in Guatemala. And it was incredible. I mean, but my identity was, was wrapped in the ministry. I was holding too tight to a possible career in the ministry. And then the Lord took us from Guatemala and brought us here. For over two years, I personally struggled because I was, I was feeling that I had no purpose. One day, if you know the area, we were in the John Crampton Park. And I was just sitting there listening to music. And I was like, Lord, I'm tired of feeling that I have no purpose. And then he told me, why do you think? I mean, that's what I felt in my heart, you know, like through the word and then through some worship. It's like your identity was wrapping what you were doing. I'm bigger than that. And then after that, I started sharing the word, doing deliveries, COVID hit. You remember those days, right? How difficult it was. COVID hit. And I got to tell you, it's not because I'm on stage here this morning. But God restores. And in areas of our life where we think or where we lose our focus, he will refocus our lives again. And we will be able to see him. So I want to invite you to watch this video and let's pay attention to what the Lord has for us. Uh, from a young age, I set a subconscious goal to fill the hole inside my soul between boys and drugs and travels and grades. I got lost between the highs and the low ways. In disillusion and in frustration, my grasping worsened beyond desperation and together it brought to the, the count of three of the times that the devil tried to take my life from me. Rock bottom brought my eyes up, not quite to God, but to other stuff. 
And as I explored this spiritual realm, it was chaos with nobody at the helm. Yet I found a framework that I thought might fit to accommodate the lifestyle that I wanted to live. But another set of waves came crashing down and all that I had built still let me drown. Um, so another time I had to start again, but I decided that it was time to learn from a friend. His name was Buddha and he called me East to learn how to live and learn how to be. But even with Southeast Asia under my feet, something didn't quite feel complete. Upon returning home back to the States, now my future plans were melting away. And another count of three totaled the number of companies that did not want me. By this time, I knew something was up. And after a reconnection, I thought it was love. I was head over heels and I could not stop it for a man who taught me that Joseph Smith was a prophet. And I met Jesus in the Church of Latter-day Saints, and the impact of his love was not faint. And I did go underwater following false prophecy, but even that could not get God's love off of me. He granted me wisdom to see for myself that that skepticism wasn't just a small thing that I was feeling or felt. <laughs> um, after leaving the Mormons and leaving the boy, I couldn't turn my back on the true source of joy. Though I've been a visitor more than I've been a member, God helped me put all of the pieces together. I spent time reading his word for myself rather than relying on feelings for someone else. As Ecclesiastes told me of nothing new under the sun, it hit me that I was not the only one. Grasping for meaning in all of this mist, but now there's light instead of abyss. <laughs> um, for the waves that used to break me apart are no match for the king of my heart. Though the 99 are kept from going askew, the good shepherd still seeks the one that's a little bit cuckoo. <laughs> so today and every day, to him I surrender, and I'm glad that we could all love him together. Romans 10, 9 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus is calling us today to surrender our lives, to bring life in areas of our lives. So I wanna invite you to something. I wanna invite you to stand up. And I want to be very intentional this morning. You might be here for the first time, or you might be here for the hundredth time. But I believe with all my heart, as I was back in Guatemala that Easter week, that Passion Week, that the Lord is calling some of us just to come to Him. So I wanna extend a first invitation. And I wanna ask you to uh, just close your eyes and help me to pray, church. If you are here, and this morning, and you have never made the decision to surrender your life to Jesus. If for many, many times, you've been feeling cold to do it. Maybe there's times that you've been weeping, that you've been very close to him but you have not been able to lift up your eyes and see that he is next to you, seeing you with eyes of love. I wanna ask you, if you're here in this morning and you have not made that decision, we want to pray for you. We want to lead you into this moment. And if you wanna surrender your life to Christ, can I ask you to raise your hand and someone will pray for you? I know you might hesitate. I know you might say, oh, I didn't came here to this. But I, let me tell you, Jesus is calling you. He's saying, your name, look at me, your name. 
I'm here. He is here for you. So if there's anyone in this morning, in this place, that wants to surrender his life to Jesus, this is your morning. It's a morning of salvation. It's a morning that will change your life forever. I promise you, it will change your life forever. But it's a step, it's a leap of faith. You want me to pray, to, to, uh, pray church? Just pray, pray for salvation this morning. And if that's you, please raise your hand. We wanna pray for you. I will ask someone to go and pray for you. We're not gonna ask you to come here, but this is between you and God, you and Jesus. He is here for you.